Okay, so um, I'm also going to be quick. Um, so basically, okay, my name is Alexander Garcia, and I'm also working for the uh, Polytechnica de Madrid in Spain. I used to work mostly for industry for the last three years, and now I'm kind of coming back to um, doing work in academia. Um, so this this um, presentation is organized as follows. First, I'm going to talk about some generalities for what has to do with annotations. And then I'm going to present what I would like to do during this hackathon, which I think is very well aligned to uh, the previous call and the one before. Um, and I also I will also present some examples uh, that will help you and to understand why is it that I want to do this. Um, so I have been working basically um, the kind of annotations I have been working with have to do with uh, lab information management systems and also have to do with experimental protocols, but not, uh, when I say experimental protocols, I don't mean uh, workflows like Taverna, but instead I mean real experimental protocols, meaning real, um, you know, the kind of um, papers that researchers do write whenever they are doing experiments. So it's, it's nothing is structured, it's usually messy, and it usually has a lot of uh, related information like spreadsheets and PowerPoints and things like that. So that's, that's um, more or less the kind of information I, I deal with. I also work with um, information in psychology because of the work that I was doing previously for the American Psychological Association. And I also work with PubMed Centro, um, as everybody else. So um, this, uh, this is just to say that um, um, annotation is, not, is nothing really new. Um, and, and I would say that nothing that I have um, been hearing so far is, is really new. It, it has been put forward by many people. This one, um, like Tim Berners-Lee, for instance, um, uh, Mark Anderson, um, this, he also put forward uh, the need for uh, annotation in, in the web at large. Um, this is from a project that is Hypothesis, and this is, I mentioned Hypothesis now because Hypothesis well, is, is one of the things that I would like to work on during this hackathon. Um, they did this survey, they counted more than 70 different annotation projects uh, just recently. Uh, and by annotation I mean things like uh, th uh, like Tacto, uh, tools that allow people to do annotation on PDFs and on, on, on web resources in general, whether you talk about images or, or whatever you talk about. So uh, annotations uh, tend to be really ad hoc and all of these projects tend to be, I mean, all the tools that uh, are being developed are being developed in a very ad hoc way. They uh, do something for one specific project, and they are not always uh, easy to reuse. Um, so <laughs> all of these resources tend to be very expensive, not easy to maintain, and then uh, and people tend to uh, build uh, have to build this kind of annotation framework over and over again. So they are not really reusable. Um, not only the uh, the infrastructure, but also the annotations are not always easy to reuse. So. The problem, as I saw it, is a similar problem that the one to the one that we uh, were addressing at the BioJS um, effort, which has to do with building um, JavaScript components for visualizing biomedical information. So instead of, of, of everyone building uh, their own uh, browser, their own genomic browser, we thought what makes sense is that you have reusable components so that whenever you need a genomic browser, then you just come here to BioJS, you get your component, and you just put your component in, in, a, in the way you will need the browser to behave. Um, so the same thing I would say could be applied to um, things uh, that have, have to do with annotation. Um, so um, I would say that, that here, and this I put this together this just by hearing people before me. So uh, we need one single format for, the, for biomedical annotation and need to stick to it. Uh, and we also need um, to adapt and, and present an annotation framework for the biomedical domain, domain and, and we should uh, understand how to set it um, so that uh, not everybody is building again and again annotation tool. Um, also, I would say that uh, we need to go fair because annotations, the infrastructure and the annotations themselves, they need to be uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, so uh, for this hackathon, what I want to do is that I want to take hypothesis, which is, which is a very general annotation framework that is built for web resources. In theory, it also works very well with, uh, with uh, PDFs. Um, and I would like to test it against biomedical, the biomedical domain. And I would like to understand 
uh, what is it, what are the limitations of hypotheses with respect to this specific domain, and how to move forward so that we can put the case um, to the hypothesis people and they can take it from there on because they are building this kind of infrastructure for the general web and they are having a very modular approach so I don't see why can't we do something similar. Um, so as I said before annotation goes a long way I guess that it goes I mean even before the web this Vandevar Bush also mentioned annotation as a key component of any information system. Um, some of the experiences that, that are taking me you know, here having this position it is, for instance, um, um, when I was working, uh, before doing consultancy, I was, again, working in the academia, and I was doing this uh, head injury scenario, so I had to uh, facilitate the annotation of medical images, dicom images, uh, for uh, radiologists, and then I realized that annotation was, was really an issue for them. But it wasn't the issue, it, it wasn't an issue as I saw that most people were understanding it, because for them it was a matter of getting uh, specific images from a pool of images of many many images and the, the, the problem here was that radiologists they don't annotate the uh, they don't do the classical annotation so they do the classical annotations in the sense that they have the image here and then they just uh, annotate the image saying here is um, something uh, this is um, a brain tumor or whatever they need to annotate they need to say about the image but the real information, the real useful information, they record it. They do voice record, right? So you need to relate. If you want to do something in that domain, you, what you really need is something that relates to whatever they say, whatever they dictate, uh, to the actual image that they have in hand. And, and that's, that's something very, very hard. Um, I also work on the DAS Ryback, which is a collaborative, collaborative annotation system. It is designed for the uh, distributed annotation system, which is for proteomics. And, and with that project, what we, what we were interested in doing was that we were interested in supporting uh, collaborative annotation for, uh, for proteomics. Um, okay. Um, so here, this was pretty much thinking that uh, makes more sense to have a thousand people annotating proteins than just having two or three curators, or expert curators doing the annotations of more than a million sequences. Um, then I also did annotation for for uh, PubMed Central, where I just uh, took the open access full text version of PubMed Central, and I did the annotation. I generated the RDF. I mapped um, the uh, my RDF to uh, BioTor RDF so that I could resolve that and and, and, and all that. But uh, I mean, throughout all of these experiences, the, the common thing was that I was always having to build over and over again the same kind of infrastructure, right? So the case was a, a simple case of annotation, but it didn't really matter because the, there was no format uh, until I came across with the uh, open annotation framework, the annotation ontology, which was in the beginning the annotation ontology, and, and I could use that, but for what has to do with doing the annotation side, depending on the format that I was dealing with, I, I always had to, do, to build the same kind of infrastructure. Um, so um, these are um, some of the lessons, so, so I think that we are underestimating um, the problem of the PDF. And I say this because I have been dealing with, with having to annotate PDFs and it's not as straightforward as, as most of the tools, uh, people doing this kind of tools uh, think. Um, the simple case is when you, uh, when you, when I receive, for instance, in, in, in a project I, I am working on now, I received a lot of uh, experimental protocols annotated by biologists and they do uh, the annotation using a Corbett reader, for instance, some others use Mac, and they do annotation. They literally open the PDF and they start annotating that. As soon as you start annotating that, now the, 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 the PDF remains a PDF. But in, in, in reality, uh, when you want to jailbreak that PDF and do text mining on the annotations that you receive on that PDF, you cannot do it. Uh, why not? I have no idea, but you can't. Uh, and, and, and so I think that we are really underestimating the, the the complexity of dealing with the PDF. Now, entity recognition plus link open data takes takes us a long way, but not far enough. Uh, so yes, we can do this kind of uh, concept-based queries and all that, but I would say that that's not really um, that's not that that's not really uh, far enough. Um, NLP is knowledge intensive. Uh, it requires a lot of domain experts. It's, it's expensive and it has to be very specific. Uh, and I would like to see something much more general. I think that we need better ontologies. 
Uh, and I think that uh, I have seen many people trying this crowdsourcing, uh, but I think that there are no in incentives uh, for um, calling to the wisdom of the crowds, as they say. So, uh, and why? Well, I think this is mostly a social issue. It's not really a technology issue. So with that, I think that that's my 10 in <laughs> 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 <laughs>